hi guys hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel thank you very much if it is your first time my name is memory karunga and if you are golden oldie thank you as well for always watching my youtube channel i don't want to chit chat a lot today but i just want to go straight to the point um the last video i have recorded i don't know if it's going to be if it's going to follow but i wish it would follow but then the last sit down i had we talked about sex in church and then sex versus spirituality and i got an overwhelming response not necessarily in comments but necessarily in the views like in a week's time it is my first time to have seen up to 400 people been watching a video and i'm really excited thank you very much if you have watched and i thought to myself like why not continue the same topic that is receiving such an overwhelming response and such an overwhelming um uh, views so i thought about let me go deeper like when i was growing up as a young girl um the most hidden topic was sex like the only thing we were told was to stay away from sex do not indulge into sexual activities guys excuse me i live next to a hostel and then i also have children like a lot of children so they're making noise so please excuse me about the noise that is in the background this is the time i'm getting to record as i was saying early before i went and scolded my babies <laughs> I was saying that I received an overwhelming response and then the most hidden topic that we had or uh, we indulged into as youth and growing up in the church was sex. The only thing that I was, okay, I'm speaking in my own experience. I'm not speaking for anyone. I'm speaking anything and everything I was speaking here is just my experience and what I've seen and what I've encountered. It is nothing that is proven or I'm, I'm no expert or whatsoever. So if you're watching this, do not say that it is an expert's opinion. It's just what I've lived through and what I've gone through that I want to share with a younger version of me. And this is also a message I'll be leaving to my daughter once she grows up. Because sex is not touched. It is hidden. It is forbidden. Um, I think the reason why um, we don't tackle the issue of sex in church or why it was not tackled is because people feel like if you really have to tell the person the truth about it, then this person will want to explore. The truth which is sex is blessed. Sex is good and God created sex for us to enjoy and it is the most wonderful thing one can have and sex can also destroy that's why a lot of young people are destroyed through sex that's why you see like uh, most of the movies and the music videos and you can also see in the cartoons there is some form of people exposing kids to sex so um let me say um it's bread of life i'm sorry to say it is the bread of life yes it also it is also having health benefits and um i think that the, the church folks were afraid to reveal all these things to us once we have the information we might want to explore it but the thing is like if we know the information and we have it at hand and we know when to use it then we might just preserve ourselves because we know the real truth we know like the honest truth i don't know if it's even a word but you know the reality of what sex can do and what sex is for then you would know how to practice it i believe i'm talking about what i believe i believe that one should not be stopped to have sex get me right but i believe that one should be taught and it should be your entire decision whether you want to continue with it or whether you want to abstain or whatever you do because entirely it's your life you do what you what is best for you you do you but at the end of the day as christians in the church we are told like no do not have sex do not date and if the flesh burn marry yeah very true very true the Bible does not just say the flesh burn, get married. It starts with um, saying, 
it is best for you to remain single but if the flesh has to burn you should marry so paul is i think paul at some point i i i really think that that man has seen a lot of marriages or i sometimes think he was married but this is not proven because the things that paul speaks about marriage and about singleness is very deep it is like He's speaking from experience, but what can I say? Jesus himself was never married, but he is the teacher of marriage. So, um, what am I trying to say? Marriage or, or sex is not spoken to because people are ashamed. And let's look in our cultures. Me, I'm a Damara, growing up as a Damara, and it is very, okay, in the Damara culture, a bit when you are grown or when you are growing up, our mothers sit and talk to us. But if I can go in the Herero culture, I'm married to a Herero man and I've been living with Herero people for quite some time. Um, sex is a forbidden topic between a mother and a daughter or even a father and a daughter. It is something that is not spoken about. It is something that is not touched between that relationship. Mothers don't speak to their daughters about um, sex, especially in the hero culture, they tell you that you should not talk too much, you should be submissive, blah, 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 blah and stuff like that. Now, in culture, it, sex is not addressed. How much more the people that are born in those cultures are the ones that are actually going to church, are the ones that are the pastors of the church, and are the ones that are making, like, teaching the young people. Do you think that if the pastor is not addressing sex in his own house, he will be addressing sex in the church? No, I'm not shaming anyone and I'm not blaming anyone. I just uh, am talking about my experience and what I would like. And I've seen um, the gap. So I would want to also speak. This is the message I would give to my younger self. Speak to the young people. Why church in, in church sex is not spoken about. I think from this era that we are having. If my daughter has to grow up, my son has to grow up, and they are at the ages of, of, of 14, they are at the ages of 18, I think that it is the right thing to do to talk to your children about sex. Because if you don't talk to the children about sex, school is gonna do it. TV is gonna do it, radio is gonna do it, friends are gonna do it, perpetrators are gonna do it. So if you don't educate your children about sex, in the church who's gonna do it you see there's a lot of instruments that the enemy is using to exploit sex or to promote sex or to bring the attention of sex to our young people so if us that are born again don't talk about sex in the church who's gonna do it just a question I'm posing so the other thing that I want to cover also in this one is like what happens if you feel like okay fine I'm, i've given my life to god but at the end of the day you've given your life to god you're born again but there's gonna be mutual attraction you're gonna like someone in the church or outside the church opposite sex you're gonna like them what do you then do what what is your response since the bible says that we must run from lustful desires and since we are taught that if the flesh burns, we should just marry. A lot of people has done that mistake because the flesh has burnt. They got married and the marriage down the line, eh, it didn't go well. People have realized that they made mistakes and they are not compatible. And this person has been lying about himself. And then now people are living in marriages that are miserable. Um, that are broken, that are not so desirable. So then we later would be backslide and say, it is because of that church that I was told to become born again or I was told to get married and I married the wrong woman. I was supposed to marry sister who, who or sister so, so. And then you end up blaming the church for marrying the wrong people. Yes, the church is at fault for just teaching you about getting married and not teaching you about giving you coaches of life lessons, allowing young people to go in courtship, God-fearing courtship, you get me. 
courtship where you sit and you talk about the real deal about your finances about the number of children you're going to have about your families you see all those things has to be addressed before you even decide to go into marriage but now homegirl is just excited a brother has noticed her and then she'll be like oh he wants to marry me let's get married and let's have children you go ahead you do all those things at the end of the day it's going to be a mess and you're going to live a miserable life i think that one once this is this is not what i think guys do not hunt me for this but i think that once people have found that mutual attraction in church and see that i like brother so on so i think that the right thing to do is in, to inform your leaders as a believer you should have a mentor someone should be accountable for you and your mentor should be somebody you trust somebody you can share any and everything with it should you should not pick a mentor that you are uncomfortable sharing or a mentor that will end up judging you so pick a mentor that you are comfortable with once you see this mutual attraction inform your mentor your mentor will take you through the process of dating in the church or let me call it rather courtship in the church they will tell you all the things that you need to do like the that how you have to go on dates because being born again and dating is a little bit different from being in the world and dating being in the world you will visit each other at each other's houses you will cuddle you'll have sex you will know each other on other levels you're not supposed to know each other because those levels it's only wife and husband that has to explore those levels but being born again you have certain boundaries and it's making things difficult for believers or people that are born again to sustain relationships and to know each other and then they just jump into a thing where the thing become things us as believers or born again people we don't also believe in therapy and we don't go for therapy that is already a recipe for disaster if you don't go for therapy or you don't go for counseling before you go because like you would not know what the guy's intentions are you would also not know who this person is you met unless you get to learn about them or get to explore about them you wouldn't know nothing so you need to sit down you need to talk you need to a conversation you need you need to share for you to find out is this the person that i really want to spend the rest of my life with or will this person really frustrate me will i frustrate the person are we compatible will we be able to live together will we not be able to live together those are the things that this courtship will take you through mentorship will take you through therapy will take you through if you have your principles in place not just the ladies but the guys also and you're saying that no i'm not gonna have sex with you before we are married we have to know each other you have your principles in place i think that there's nothing to be feared but then the tricky part is if you listen or if you do things that are going to warm you guys like what do i mean by warm you guys if you are entertaining to stay for longer hours together alone obviously obviously there's gonna be attraction in any form or way and then you're gonna do the do that you didn't want it to do or the do that you didn't want it to indulge into so why do i think that this topic has to be explored today we talked about um why church is not open about sex and what do you do if you feel attracted first thing is i think that you should have a mentor that you should share things with second thing is you should have therapy that you're going to counseling where you guys sit and you talk sometimes even if you have a mentor there are psychological issues that you would really need to deal with and you would need to 
handle with before marriage because it's not just the right to go in marriage with baggages we all have our previous lives we all had went through things and we want those things to be addressed and be resolved so that when you go in them holy matrimony then you go in as a new person that's why you need those things but these things are not spoken about these things are never addressed that's why we see broken homes that's why we see people going and getting divorces later because they realize that they are not compatible marriage is meant to be enjoyed marriage is a beautiful thing marriage is meant for for you to enjoy and give glory to god sister it is not just for you to just jump on and get off no it is for you to give glory but then we spoil the things everything that god meant for good the devil comes and turn it around and he wants to flip it around and he wants to rob us of the good things that god has promised us and sometimes he make us indulge into things prematurely and once you use the thing prematurely you know you damage the thing has to be mature in order for you to indulge into whatever it is that you want to indulge into so guys Thank you very much for watching. I don't want to be long today. I will buy a pratni vandag. So I will leave it there. We will still take our mentorship. How 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 we have to be mentored and what questions you need to ask your mentor and how the mentor has to be. So when we are dating in church. So that if this thing that is a burning issue, that is a hard thing in the church, can also become a bit um, comfortable for us. So that we can have more sex talks in the church. Because of sex, sometimes we backslide. Because of sex, we go through a lot of things. Because who does not want to have sex? Even if you're born again, you want to have sex. So we need to talk about these things and educate each other. And at the end of the day, it becomes your decision whether you're going to do what is right for you and what God is saying or whether you just stand up and do what's good for yourself. So with that, I have come to the end of today's video. Thank you very much. If you have watched thus far, please, please help me and subscribe on my channel so that we can reach that 1,000 subscription. Thank you and see you in the next video or vlog. Doodles.